Not everyone can get a six pack and keep it without suffering, but every single one of you can lose weight from where you are right now with minimal effort if you know what to eat. Coach Greg, and today I'm reviewing Gravity Transformations video, 14 tips to lose belly fat effortlessly, okay? I'm gonna watch the entire video and I'm gonna comment and see if it makes sense if they're giving you good or bad advice. This channel is 2.6 million subs and over 3 million people have watched this video. So hopefully it's got the good advice and not spewing lies just to get more views. Our bodies are wired to store fat around our center of mass, which happens to be the belly, love handles, and hips. And there's a very good reason for this. Just think of it in the old days. If you didn't eat for a week, you needed to have some storage of energy to survive, to be able to go walk all week to hunt for food. So that's why we store fat. Now, unfortunately, the fat that's stored around the stomach, as in the stomach, the belly fat, that's the worst kind of fat to store. So you need to reduce your overall body fat percentage low enough to allow your body to burn the fat everywhere else before it starts pulling energy from the fat stored around your midsection. Unfortunately, that's different for everyone. Some people are lucky and they get a six pack really easy. They have fat legs and a six pack. Some people are shredded, quads look amazing, ripped muscles showing everywhere, but they got a belly. You can't do anything about that. You can't just eat a certain food, train a certain way, do a bunch of sit-ups, and move around the fat into the spots that you want it. I mean, if we could, we just all put it in our glutes, have big, huge, round bums, and have no fat in the stomach. But we can't. Anyone that says you can is immediately lying to you and selling you garbage. The very first extremely effective thing that you can do is limit the amount of high sugar foods that you eat. The reason for that is when you eat sugar, you get used to how good it tastes. Sugar tastes freaking amazing, trust me. The more of it you eat, the more of it you want to eat. It's like an addiction, it's like a drug. So if you cut out a lot of the sugars in your diet, you're not gonna get that addiction feeling. What should you do instead of sugar? He says, fruit, yes! Finally, some good advice from somebody having a YouTube channel. Half the time I watch these things and they're all spewing lies. Eat fruit. Next, when you go shopping, you're gonna wanna stick to the outside perimeter of the grocery store and avoid the inner aisles. No, come on, that's just too much of a blanket statement. Only shop around the perimeter of the grocery store? Where do you think I get my freaking popcorn? It's not in the perimeter. I get the popcorn in the center. Am I supposed to not buy popcorn because it's not in the middle? Where do you think I get my cocoa? My decaf coffee, my coffee. It's all over the store. You're allowed to buy and shop and browse normally. Not that, oh, shop from the outside. That's just too, it's just too much of a blanket statement. So many people have said this, oh, it's because it's got the produce and stuff. Just give them the advice. Fruits, vegetables, meats, healthy carbs and fats. Go through the grocery store in every single aisle and buy the foods that you know you need. It's that simple. You don't have to just stick to the sides. So yeah, there's high sugar cereals, high calorie cereals. There's chips, there's junk food, cookies, junk in the center aisles. Yeah, but you can walk past it and not put it in your cart. Just because you see a cookie, don't need, you need to put it in the cart. There are some things in the inner aisles like rice, quinoa, and nuts that can actually fill up your stomach and help you reduce your body fat. No! These are not low calorie dense foods that fill you up, that stretch your stomach and make you full. No, you think that if you start dieting, you're just gonna eat a bunch of rice and quinoa and nuts. That's the opposite of what you need to do. Less rice. Whatever amount of rice you're eating, get rid of the rice and eat popcorn instead, or eat vegetables instead, eat fruit instead, eat something more filling. Rice is not filling at all. And nuts is one of the most unfulfilling foods you can eat. In five minutes, you could eat a thousand calories of nuts and not even realize it, and not even feel full. All these things I explain in my freaking cookbook. I should just, I, it should be just easier. Greg's cookbook. 
and it's the solution to life's problems. It really freaking is. So when you do go into the inner aisles, you wanna follow the next tip, which is to pick mostly single ingredient foods. These are foods that have a low calorie density, which means that for the amount of space that they take up in your stomach, they'll only add a relatively low amount of calories to your daily total. Okay, he's half right here. Low calorie dense foods, kaboom! If you follow that advice, you can't go wrong. He's showing pictures of vegetables on the screen. That all makes sense, but he's saying it's a single ingredient food. A perfect example of this is comparing Oreos to something like broccoli. Yeah, I get it. Broccoli is a lot more filling than Oreos, but it's not just because of the amount of ingredients that are in it. Oreos are just a higher calorie food with a lot of sugar and crap in it. Everyone knows broccoli is going to be healthier for you, but it doesn't mean you need to eat broccoli either. I hate broccoli. I don't eat broccoli. I eat foods that I love. Foods that I enjoy, that I want to eat. I don't eat a bunch of Oreos. I love those too. But there's other foods you can eat instead that taste amazing. Oh, my freaking cookbook. Protein brown is going to taste better than an Oreo. Chocolate protein pudding tastes better than an Oreo do. Now, not to everyone. And even if it didn't, it's going to be 80% as good. And I've explained in other videos. 80% is enough. You get used to tasting things at 80%, you're gonna be happy, you're gonna like yourself, you're gonna like your diet. Just like if your girlfriend or boyfriend's an eight on 10, that's freaking hot enough. Yeah, you want 10 on 10, yeah, I get it. You want V-Shred, yeah. You want Vivi Winkler. You want these girls that are the 10 on 10s or 9.99. You can't have them. You can have an eight. Put up with the eight, like the eight, love the eight, and you're set. And it's true. It's gonna take more energy to break down broccoli than it is to break down Oreos, but it's not because they have multiple ingredients. It's because they have more fiber. This is really simple. Anything that's higher in protein and fiber is gonna have a higher thermic effect of food. That means how many calories your body is burning in the digestive process. So when you eat a lot of protein or foods and fiber like vegetables, the body burns calories to get the calories from the calories. You get that? If you eat 100 calories of chicken, by the time the chicken turns into body fat, it doesn't have 100 calories left because your body is burning it off. You're sweating and it's digesting. There's workers in the friggin' stomach. Chop, 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 chop. It's chopping up the broccoli. It's work, they're working. It's burning calories. Think of it as cardio for your stomach. When you eat, your stomach is burning calories, digesting that food. That's the thermic effect of food. It doesn't get rid of calories in, calories out. The calories in have to be burnt. It can be burnt through running, like any exercise. It can be burnt through the digestion process. It can be burnt by turning it into muscle, storing as fat, whatever. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you think. It really doesn't matter. At the end of the day, you need a calorie deficit. Calories in, calories out. So you need to eat food to put you in a deficit. Don't be afraid to add enough olive oil, seasonings, and spices to your meals to make them taste great. Being the type of person that pours one droplet of oil on the frying pan may save you some calories in the short run, but ultimately, heavily restricting will lead to a binge and failure in the long run. Nope! Add in the olive oil. Come on! You're gonna add a shit ton of calories onto your food to make it taste good? There's other lower calorie dense food ways to do so. It's the same as this. Oh, I don't like asparagus so much. I'm gonna eat this 100 calories of asparagus and it doesn't taste so good. So I know I'm gonna put 400 calories of butter in it and cook it and then it'll taste great. Yeah, it will taste great. So the secret is not adding a bunch of fat to make it taste good, it's adding stuff with less calories to make it taste good. Like when I have a salad, I have light dressing. You don't have to pull the full fat, high calorie dressing, you don't need it. Low cal syrups, mustards, Walden Farms barbecue sauce, Ghee's barbecue sauce, low calorie condiments. That's the key. You can save hundreds of calories a day from your diet without changing anything. You're eating the exact exact way that you're currently eating, but you switched up the condiments to different condiments and you're saving calories upon calories. This could result in 10 or 20 pounds of fat loss in a year. You're not even changing your diet. You're still eating everything the same. You just swap things out. You don't have regular ketchup. You have no sugar added ketchup. So 
freaking simple. If you don't think like that, there's nothing you're going to do to make change. Change in your body doesn't take a genius. It just takes common sense, a little bit of know-how, and my cookbook will freaking help for sure. And if you can't afford it, watch more of my videos. Everybody knows there's a direct correlation between the number of videos you watch by me and your decrease, decrease in body fat and increase in muscle mass and your overall life expectancy, quantity, quality of life improved, and mental wellness as well. Every freaking thing you can do is better more videos you watch the better you are being the type of person that pours one droplet of oil on the frying pan or oh, use the oil of two tablespoons and no stop cooking like your mom taught you when you're seven it's 2020 not only can you be a circle you can cook intelligently with less fat we don't have cast iron stoves from freaking 1952. We have T-Fell, non-stick resistant, whatever special stuff, one second spray, it doesn't stick to the pan. Another thing that you should do right away is up your protein intake if it's currently low. If you don't eat enough protein, add more protein. What else is new? If you don't have enough healthy fats, add more healthy fats. If you eat too many calories, eat less of them. If you don't do enough cardio, do more cardio. Tips on losing weight. Another benefit that we get for fat loss is that protein requires significantly more energy to digest than carbs and fats. Doesn't mean they've broken the laws of thermodynamics. That's what you're thinking. It's the fact that the body is burning more calories. The workers in the stomach are doing cardio, chopping up the freaking food that you eat, and it takes them more work to convert protein to fat than fat to fat. Fat's already fat, it doesn't take a lot of work. It's simple. Studies have shown that protein helps fill you up and reduces hunger. If you're eating protein instead of sugar, for example, sugar is going to make you want to binge later. It makes you have that sweet tooth craving. It's going to make you want to eat sugar later. Protein doesn't do that. Not many people say, oh, I, I blew my diet this weekend. I ate 17 chicken breasts. Once I started on the chicken, I just couldn't stop myself on that chicken breast. No, it's going to be carbs, cookies, chips, snacks, jelly beans, jelly worms, pizza. It's always some kind of a junky food, okay? No one's binging on chicken and egg whites. They just aren't. How much protein do you need? He says 0 0.7, 0 0.8, whatever, grams per pound of body weight. I've said the most you could ever need is one. So yeah, I'll go with the 0.8. It's plenty of protein. You should try to eat it five meals a day if possible, three at least, and if you're fasting, you're not gonna get the protein synthesis that you hope for. It's not gonna be optimal. I didn't say you can't build muscle, I said optimally build at maximum capacity. It's very important that you follow the next simple rule of making healthy food taste great. Of course, don't eat chicken, broccoli, and rice. Oh, I boil my chicken, eat plain vegetables. That diet is doomed for failure. 95% of people that start a diet fail. They lose the weight, then they gain it all back and then some. That doesn't happen with my cookbook. The food's freaking taste good, it's so important. You can't follow a diet that doesn't taste good. It must taste great, not just good. You have to love it. Love it like you don't even need to feel like you're on a diet. That's what I eat all year, off season, on season, diet, no diet, I eat the same friggin' foods. It's not like, oh, when I get to my goal weight, I'll then go back to eating my old weight. No, the cookbook is forever. For freaking ever. Similar to making healthy food taste great, the next tip is to allow yourself an occasional cheat meal, but only after you fill up your stomach. So this is exactly the advice I give all my freaking clients that I coach. When you're going to cheat, eat some low calorie dense foods first, so that your stomach is expanded. You guys don't think I can eat? I can frigging eat, trust me. So for me to look the way I do, I don't have some magic metabolism. I have to eat exactly as I'm doing to be able to maintain this. If I ate what I want, I'd have 20 plus percent body fat, just like most people, okay? I tricked my body filling foods with less calories. So that 400 calorie shake that I have, you've seen it, I put it over my head, it doesn't dump out. That fills me up so that by the time I eat the pizza, I'm full. I eat less food than Ali does because I've had that shake first. If it wasn't for the shake of 400 calories, I would have probably eaten an extra 2,000 of the pizza. Speaking of pizza. My lunch. <laughs> this oh, is, you oh. almost knocked it over. Hey.
Don't eat it. This is her lunch. What did I have for lunch? Oh, uh, French toast baked stuff. French toast. And it was made with nectarines. I had nectarine French toast for breakfast. She's had pizza and garlic fingers. Yeah, but I didn't eat anything yet. So, babe, if I was to say uh, that in that plate, so there's about a thousand calories on that plate. So what could she do to still be full, but still eat her pizza and garlic fingers, but be full and less calories? She could have a protein ice cream shake, something filling first, a 300 calorie shake, and she probably wouldn't eat any pizza because she'd be full, but let's say a 200 calorie shake. Then she could eat half of that. Half of 1,000 calories, 500, plus a 200 calorie shake, 700 calories, and she'd be more full than the 1,000 calories. That's how simple this is. Another really important thing to do is to make sure that you get enough sleep. Of course, if you're sleeping, you can't be eating. If you're up all night and you're just doing nothing and you're bored, you're going to eat and you're going to go in the freaking pantry with all that crap that's sitting there. Keep the junk out of the pantry. That's my tip. Don't have it in the first place so then you're not tempted by it. He says six to seven hours of sleep. That's a guess. It might be four to 20 hours of sleep. We don't know. Every age is different. Every person's different. If I sleep six hours, that's awesome. If my girlfriend, six hours, that's a nightmare. Trust me, you don't want to see her on six hours sleep. Trust me, she needs eight or nine hours sleep. If I get seven, that's a freaking amazing. So you can't just say get six, seven hours sleep. Get enough sleep. That's different for everyone. That'd be like me saying get 2,000 calories. For me, that's a starvation diet. For you, that might make you overweight. You can't just give a reference like that. You can add some high intensity interval training to boost fat loss a little further. I am sick and tired of HIIT cardio. Does it work to make you in shape? Yes. Does the average person need it? No. Does the average person know how to do it? No. Does the average person even do it? No. Does any YouTube channel explain how to do it properly? Rare. Oh, do 15 minute hit cardio. One minute hard and then rest for 30 seconds. That's not hit cardio. Hit cardio is 30 seconds absolute torture speed and then several minutes of rest back and forth. You need to put your body into a nightmare state where it doesn't want to do what it's doing. The average person doing 15 minutes of hit is going to burn somewhere between one and 200 calories. So yeah, let's add one or 200 calories of burning a week. And you think that's gonna make a big change? There's more change in drinking a liter of water seven days a week than that. So pick your pick, 15 minutes of hit cardio or drink more water. More water will burn more calories than the hit. Do more freaking cardio than you're doing. How much? Do two and a half hours, at least do that per week. If you do two and a half hours a week, you're gonna be a healthy person. To set up your diet in a way that helps you eat less without you feeling hungry or deprived. For some of you, this may mean that you fast for the majority of the day and have a couple large meals. He says, oh, it is this and that, and some people. Yeah, a couple people it works. Most it doesn't. Most it causes binge eating. Oh, I'm gonna fast for 16 hours, starve myself all day, then I get to eat all this food at once. Yay, I... that's not healthy. You should be eating three to five meals a day. Five would be optimal. Three is better than two. Two is better than one but three to five meals a day, spread it out, protein in each meal, that's the best way to keep the hunger hormones at bay, okay? So in conclusion, don't force yourself to follow a freaking boring ass broccoli chicken rice diet. Get my cookbook. $99, but it's worth $99,000 because it's finally gonna get you the diet that actually works. It actually works for life, not just for a diet, because you can eat these foods all the time, not just on the diet, all the time, not just you, your kids, your grandma, grandma Josephine likes these foods and little freaking baby Stuart does as well. Little three-year-olds like the French toast and pancakes and smoothies. They can all eat this stuff. If you even like 10 of the recipes out of the hundred plus on that plan, it is so well worth it. 10 foods that you can eat that you love for the rest of your life. Think about it. It's priceless information, people. GregDuset.com for coaching. Greg Duset IP Pro. Check me out on Instagram. Bloop it up two videos over here. Make sure to be watching at least one of them. And until next time, I am out.